India is the first country in the world to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole, a moment of history for the country. It was a tense final six minutes as it descended onto the lunar surface. Let's show you the moment. First of all, let's take you inside the control room just before landing. Remember, this was an uncrewed spacecraft, so no one on board, everything controlled from here in the control room. And just to explain what we're going to see, Prime Minister Narendra Modi wasn't there, so he was being beamed in on a screen to watch. Also on the screen was a graphic, computer-generated representation of the lander as it it descended. Right, let's now take a moment that it happened. Ji ha, aap apne screen pe dekh sakte hain ki hum power lander module People are applauding. Lander Let us module. all wait to hear from the Secretary Department of Space and Chairman ISRO Shri S Somnath. So you can see the cheers, the celebrations, landing on that part of the moon is no easy task. And you can see there Narendra Modi, uh, very happy, waving that flag. Let's hear uh, what he said. Friends, on this joyous occasion, I would like to address all the people of the world, the people of every country and region. India's successful moon mission is not just India's alone. This is a year in which the world is witnessing India's G20 presidency. Our approach of one earth, one family, one future is resonating across the globe. This human-centric approach that we present and that we represent has been welcomed universally. Our moon mission is also based on the same human-centric approach. Therefore, this success belongs to all of humanity and it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. I am confident that all countries in the world, including those from the global south, are capable of achieving such feats. We can all aspire for the moon and beyond. Well, the BBC's Archana Shukla is at a planetarium in Mumbai. Uh, what a moment. Uh, India is now on the moon, in the words of the Prime Minister. What a moment for the country. It's certainly a very proud moment for people here in India as, uh, as the country created history to be the first one uh, to land on the south pole of the moon um, and uh, contribute to the global space research uh, with such important uh, aspects. And, uh, you know, this is important and, and you know, uh, there were scenes of jubilation, people ch chanting uh, patriotic slogans, hugging, distributing sweets because it's a, it's a moment of joy and a moment of pride for everybody around. Around. Um, it also brings India up on the ladder uh, to be part of the elite club of just four countries to have made a soft landing on the moon um, and also uh, takes it, uh, uh, gives it a credible approach and a credible push to the cost competitive space engineering that India has been doing. Um, after the failure in 2019, um, it was really an important attempt by India to position itself. Uh, remember, it's just been four years that, uh, three years that 
India has opened up the space uh, industry for private uh, uh, players here because the government wants to make the space economy a larger portion and, and expand it. And we've already seen the startups coming into this space double in number in just three years' time. And that is the kind of interest that's coming in. And when we were talking to, uh, you know, enthusiasts, people, especially even young, um, uh, you know, audiences who were here to watch the live screening, they were all talking about the prospects this builds for India uh, to grow in the space economy, uh, to build on from here and also uh, build more jobs around the space uh, sector uh, for youth coming in. So on a lot of accounts, this is a historic moment for India as well as for the world and India's contribution into the space um, uh, research. Yeah, Arjun, a huge achievement landing in this part of the moon, the south, near the south uh, pole, because it's so much harder to land there than near the equator as has been done before. But it's not over, is it? People are still watching because the landing has taken place. The next step is the rover rolling out of the lander and on its wheels then going out on a little explore. That's what's coming up next. Absolutely. The rover is going to spend, the lander, Vikram lander and the rover are going to spend one lunar day, which is equal to 14 Earth days, on the uh, moon's south pole, uh, uh, collecting, uh, uh, you know, data from, uh, from, the, from the surface, collecting uh, evidence, looking at the craters, looking at uh, the moon quakes, uh, gathering information, and most importantly, looking for water on the lunar surface, especially on the south pole, which is considered by scientists as one of the most valuable assets on the moon because that uh, scientists say will pave the way for uh, human habitation on the moon in future and it would also support more lunar explorations and missions in the future um, and and that is something uh, uh, to look out for in the la in the next 14 days uh, one thing that isro pointed out uh, you know they said that the last mission in 2019 was focused on success and this mission was focused on failure so it was a failure oriented mission which means they had built in for all the failures that could uh, come and, and that has added to the success and this is also what will support the exploration in the next 14 days uh, with the payloads, with the scientific instruments that are on Vikram lander that would be collecting uh, a material and matter uh, and data uh, not only for the world, uh, not only for India but for the world when it comes to lunar explorations. Archana, great stuff. Thank you very much for that. Let's speak now to Dr. Raji Raja Gopalan, the director of the Center for Security, Strategy and Technology at the Observer Research Foundation in Delhi, which is a think tank. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So how important is this <clears throat> then for India? This is, of course, an important moment for India. It's a matter of pride, uh, as was mentioned, but it's also a demonstration of the growing sophistication, uh, growing maturity of India's space program. Uh, in it, because India, when it began its space program, interplanetary missions or deep space missions like Chandrayaan were not part of the uh, Indian space goals. But clearly, India has matured in terms of its capabilities. It has uh, develop advanced capabilities, deep space communication capabilities, and so on. So this is a demonstration. This is a validation of many of the advanced technologies that uh, that India has, uh, the Indian Space Agency has developed and put in place. And because these are still very complex missions, uh, very challenging in terms of um, you know you could go uh, things could go wrong at the very last minute, as was seen in the case of uh, just a few days ago the Russian mission Luna 25, or even in 2019 what happened to India's Chandrayaan 2 mission or even a few days prior to that, you had an Israeli uh, firm that was uh, 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 undertaking a similar mission, again, crash-landed. Um, so these are these just goes to show that Luna missions are still very complicated, very complex mission, uh, and uh, challenging. So uh, if you get it uh, right, that's fantastic. It, it, it's, it's hugely challenging and, and delighted. Well, so many people will be delighted uh, of the success right. so far. I just want to talk to you about the cost because, of course, it's a lot of money, uh, all these things are. But actually, relatively speaking, India has yes. not spent a great deal of money on this. Is that significant? Yeah, that is absolutely significant. But I think we also and so uh, and the the cost for the Chandrayaan two was about close to about 150 million. And if we were to compare with other similar missions that are undertaken, India's uh, India's missions have always been very very cost effective, 
one fifth or one tenth of other such missions. But India's missions are also at this point of time more of a technology demonstrator and uh, not a large scientific mission that many of the other advanced space players may be doing. Nevertheless, India's attempt is at not duplicating what, replicating what others have done, but complementing to what others have done. So in a sense, we are not landing. We, India decided to land, so do a soft landing on the southern pole of the moon. Again, is a decision that is taken by, uh, because we want to expand the humanity's understanding of the lunar surface uh, in terms of the sort of study of the rocks, study of the chemicals, chemical components, the element in, in, uh, elements in, in the lunar surface. And of course, the um, uh, water ice on the on the moon. I think that's been an uh, that's been an area of uh, curiosity uh, to a large number of a large number of folks in the scientific community across the world, not just to the uh, Indian uh, scientific community or the ISRO. Um, so I think these are uh, things that are going to be done. But I think it does have also some uh, spin-off benefits in terms of even in the financial terms when you look at it, because when India undertook the Chandrayaan mission, first one in 2008 or when uh, it did the Mangalyaan, the Mars mission in 2013-2014, uh, again, it highlighted India's space program, that it's it's a cost-effective space program, but capable yeah. of undertaking complex missions. Yeah. Um, so I think India has established, therefore, as a credible space power in that sense. Dr. Raji, uh, Raji Gopalan, thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just give you a heads up about exactly what does happen next. I was talking about that rover, smaller vehicle, which is inside uh, the aircraft that landed. Uh, that, once the dust has settled, I think quite literally, around the landing site, a couple of hours breathing space, then they're going to try and deploy that uh, rover across uh, the moon's surface. As and when that happens, of course, we will uh, bring that to you.